This is my 2010 KTM 530 EXC Champions Edition. I picked it up used, so I've been doing maintenance to get it to a known maintenance state. And I also want to apply some fixes that are recommended to address known issues or potential issues uh, with this particular model. One of those potential issues is oil transfer between the engine and transmission. So I'll be following a procedure you can read online. It's really nicely written by Hodaka Guy on advrider.com. In short, I'll be going behind the clutch and changing out some parts related to the oil pump to help address that issue of oil transfer and also upgrade the gears to those which came with a 2011 model. Here are the parts I'm going to be replacing. This is the large and small oil pump gears, the clips that hold those gears on. This is the retaining plate for the big nut that goes on the clutch basket, the oil pump uh, cover and the seal that's inside of it. This is the, uh, the crankshaft end seal, which goes into the cover on the right side of the engine. The oil pump uh, seal that goes with the uh, cover. And then for that's on the right side of the engine. And then on the left side of the engine, there's the suction side of the oil pump. And that's the O-ring seal that goes with that. And then the new oil pump shaft. Okay, the first step is to remove the gear oil. I'm gonna be removing the engine oil as well. So this is the gear oil screen and the engine oil, and then the gear oil drain is right here behind the shifter. With the gear case oil removed, the next step is to remove the coolant. The water pump can stay on, but you've got to disconnect the hose and this bolt, which is extra long and goes all the way into the engine case. Use a T45 to take off the Kickstarter. Next is the rear brake lever. Eight millimeter hex with a 13 millimeter wrench on the back for the pivot. Now this entire side cover comes off. Now the clutch pack bolts. Pull the clutch pack out, but keep it in the original order. You've got to push back these little retainers to hold this nut in place. A punch can be helpful with a mallet on the other end. They've got to be flattened back and then the nut should be free to rotate. Now this 27 millimeter nut needs to come out and it just turns counterclockwise like a standard nut, but there's a couple different ways it can be done. First is to use a specialized spanner wrench, which grabs this clutch basket and holds it in place so that you can put a regular socket and breaker bar or other large wrench on the nut. Another way to do it is to try using a impact gun. And then there's the way that I'm gonna try to do it, which is to put the bike in six gear so that this can only turn so far and the wheel has maximum leverage over this. And then block the rear tire and then sit on the rear tire and try to turn this nut loose with the breaker bar. No problem. With the nut loose and the retainer removed, the entire clutch basket assembly slides right off. With the clutch basket removed, you can see the two black plastic oil pump gears. The larger gear has a bit of shaft in play, but more notably, there's a heck of a lot of slop in its fitment on the shaft. The smaller gear is loose, but not quite as bad. So the plan is to change out both of these gears with the part from a 2011 model, which has revised dimensions and a tighter fit to the shaft. To remove these gears, a small flat screwdriver helps to remove these E-clips. You can just put it into one of the slots in the E-clip and sort of pry it away from the center of the shaft. With the E-clips removed, now you can pull the gears and their washers straight off the shafts and then remove the cross pin that's in the shaft behind them. Just make sure the washer hasn't fallen down into the E-clip groove. With the oil pump gears removed, you can access the oil pump cover, and you can also see here that the lower gear shaft has a good amount of in-play in it as well. So to remove the cover, use a four millimeter hex on the two bolts securing it. When removing the cover, be careful to pull it out 
and to keep the shaft pushed forward so that it does not slide out with the cover. On the back side of the oil pump cover, you can see of one of the O-rings that needs to be replaced with a 2011 model. The 2011 O-ring is a little bit thicker and should provide better sealing. Keep in mind that the oil on the inside of here is oil that's being pumped for the engine and oil on the outside of the cover is part of the transmission or gear case oil. So the seal here is important for preventing migration between the two. If you're not going to swap out the oil pump shaft with the part from a 2011 model, then stop here. Pulling the shaft out this direction won't actually let you remove the shaft fully and may prevent you from pushing it back into its original position. To remove the oil pump shaft, pull it forward enough to get access to the rotor, slide the rotor off, as well as the pin, which secures the rotor, and then push the shaft back into the slot so that we can remove it from the other side. Here's the cover for the oil pump on the left side of the engine. Again, it's just four millimeter hex screws. Now, since we've removed the rotor and pin from the right side of the engine, we can just push on the shaft from right to left, and that will push out the rotor on the left side of the engine. Then we can remove the rotor and remove this pin. And finally, we can just pull the shaft all the way through. One of the things that reportedly can contribute to oil migration is this kickstart idler gear. As I understand it, there's a hole or a pair of holes through this gear and a matching set of holes in a brass bushing that's inside it. And that is supposed to allow venting to go through the shaft and out through, I believe, this breather behind it. So the issue that can come up is that from the factory, apparently sometimes these gears and the bushings inside were misaligned. And so that obstructs the, the venting. So I'm going to check that while I'm inside here. And the way to do it is to pull off that idler gear. So I start with a pair of C-clip pliers. And with the C-clip off, now I should just be able to pull off the gear. It has a washer with it as well. And looking down at the holes, I can see that they're obstructed. Or perhaps there's just a tiny, tiny little bit of overlap between the holes. So I'm going to go ahead and drill out the brass bushing inside so that it matches the holes on the outside. Here's the finished gear after drilling it. What I did is I found a drill bit that fit the outer hole in the steel gear as tightly as I could, and that ended up being a 117 thousandths drill bit, or just bigger than 7 64ths and right around 3 millimeters. And so I drilled through both holes, and uh, that went pretty well. It's either a bronze or a brass uh, inner bushing, so it's fairly soft. And then I used this 3M Trizac pad to clean up the burrs. This is a 3000 grit pad, which can cut pretty aggressively, but it leaves a very smooth surface, as you can see inside. And finally, I used some uh, brake parts cleaner to blast everything out inside and make sure there were no little shards of brass or anything left behind. Installation of the idler gear is just the opposite of removal, but there are some interesting features you can see while it's off. First is this hole that looks like it leads out to the breather, and then this backing part of the casting on the top and the bottom have little recesses that look like they are designed to uh, line up with the holes on the back of the gear and provide the venting. So I've got this lubed up really well. So just mesh it with the kickstart. And then washer goes on the front. And finally the C-clip. Reinstallation starts on the left side of the engine. I'm going to pull out this suction side seal and replace that with the new one. And we'll insert the oil pump shaft all the way through and then switch over to the other side, the right side, to install the rotor there. So with the oil pump shaft sticking through, I need to pull it through a little bit more until I can get to the second hole there. 
and insert the cross pin. All these parts have been heavily lubricated ahead of time. And then I'll just slide the pump rotor, inner rotor I should say, over the cross pin and then work it back into the outer rotor. So at this point, for the suction side of the pump on the left side here, it's actually easier to start with the pin already inserted into the internal rotor and then just try to line it up with the slot that's in the shaft. Realistically, you may have to hold it from the other side so it doesn't slide out so that I can push this in. The rotors for the pump are seated on both sides, so now I can put the cover on on the left side. And again, with plenty of lube, I can install the new cover and the new O-ring on the right side of the engine. I want that shaft seal to be very, very lubricated when I slide it over so it doesn't get damaged. Now the new gears, starting with the cross pins. These new gears have a much, much tighter fit to the shafts. And you can see there's almost no wobble even before I've even clipped them in. So once the gears are in place, it's uh, washers, and then I'm installing new clips as well. The next thing to install is the clutch basket, and I'm doing it all as a unit. I took it out as a unit, I'm putting it back the same way with the sleeve and needle bearings and the entire assembly all at once. Thing to keep in mind is that there's the oil pump gear and the kickstarter gear they're both trying to index with this gear on the back and then of course the larger gear is trying to index with the engines here so the idea is to slide it on there and once you've got it on the splines of the transmission input shaft now your mission is to try to get the rear gear that you can't see to mesh and so to do that you can alternately play with the kickstarter gear and with the oil pump gear, both of which are easy to turn, and rotate those as you gently press and, and slightly rotate the clutch basket, and eventually it will just sort of slip together. Here's the original retainer for the nut which holds the clutch basket on. I'm actually gonna put a new one on since it's cheap to replace, and it just has to index on these ears on the clutch basket. And then the nut threads on, and I'll use the same method I used to take it off, where I leave the transmission in fixed gear, attached to the rear tire via the chain, and then I'll sit on the rear tire with it blocked and use my torque wrench to hopefully torque this nut down. Believe it or not, I was able to pinch down this retainer nut with just some basic, very non-fancy channel locks. The next step is putting the clutch pack on. Now I took mine all off at one, as one piece so I didn't have to keep track of the order. And I did my best to align the, uh, the gears, but we'll see how easily this goes on. I may have to put parts on one at a time. Clutch packs reinstalled and everything's tightened down. Quick test of the clutch. Seems to be working good. It's time to put the case cover back on. One problem you can run into is that this gear won't mesh. So what you can just do is pull it off, rotate it a little bit, try again, pull it off, rotate it a little bit, try again. Or you can always take off the water pump impeller cover and just rotate the impeller from the outside until it meshes in. Side cover's on, all the screws are torqued down, the radiator hose is connected. All that's left is to put on the kickstand and the rear brake and all the other things that had to be removed in order to get down this far. So that's about it. These are the parts that ended up being replaced. It wasn't that many in the end but these should help with uh, oil migration problems and they should also prevent some of the problems people report with sloppy or, or worn out stripped gears. And so if I run into problems with oil migration in the future, I know to look elsewhere because this has already been done. That peace of mind is nice. Hopefully this was helpful to some people. Thanks for watching.